Hey everybody, welcome. And thank you for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. My name is Zach. I'm here with Laura. Well, um, first things first, we have an update in the Marriage Therapy Radio Fantasy Football League. Amanda and the Connecticut Blue Eyes Mom team has defeated the sound couple. Nick and Sasha have lost their first game. So um, we promised cookies to anyone who beats them first. I'm happy to make good on that promise. So Amanda, let us know how to reach you. We'll send cookies your way. Congratulations again to Connecticut Blue Eyes Mom. Speaking of moms, um, today we're talking to Beth Goss. Beth is a parent-child educator. Um, She's been working with young families for a very long time. Um, Really talking about the transition to bringing baby home. Maybe there was two of us, now there's three. Maybe there's four, maybe there's five. There are a lot of uh, really interesting insights, especially for me. There's one around the idea of what is unique about the primary parent and how they get to learn most of their parenting while nobody's looking. I think that's pretty fantastic. Really kind of uh, opened my eyes to a couple things. Also, whether or not you're bringing a baby home, there's lots in here about transitions in general, uh, which I think are important, whether it's transition to a marriage or maybe even empty nesting. This is a very cool conversation. Stick around. This is the moment. The Bachelorette is back. And the power... I'm going to fall in love. ...is in Jen's hands. And I'm going to do it my way. ABC Mondays. Everything about her is great. I feel so special. Jen's looking like a queen. My men are very, very hot. Someone call 911. (laughs) You are looking so fire. This is the beginning of a new era. The Bachelorette. All new Mondays, 8, 7 central on ABC. And stream on Hulu. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Watson and the co-host of Foreplay. I'm your co-host, George Fowler, former firefighter, your couple's therapist who loves to talk about sex. Woo, let's discuss everything about the best sexual techniques to building your emotional intimacy, which is really necessary for great sex. We bring sound, concrete tools to reframe your relationship problems and learn how to fall in love again and feel desire. Listen to Foreplay Radio on the iHeart app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I was meditating. What? Yeah. I I started meditating in November. Well, again, I started re-meditating, meditating meditating again. Um, So I was, um, I squeezed it in. (laughs) I hurried up and meditated before Uh we started the podcast. Yeah, Way to be present. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. You're coming with a different type of energy. You're a little more mellow yellow. Well, here's the other thing that happened. Uh, Mary officially now is driving herself to school. That happened. Yeah. So I don't, I don't have to get up anymore. I can like get up and take my time and I'm not at the whim of a 16 year old who's just trying to figure it out. All right. Well, congratulations. Hi, Beth Goss. Welcome to Beth Goss. Welcome to the podcast. Trouble with the T's sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for having me. We were talking a little bit earlier about whether or not we'd met before and we probably have because I've been around forever. But what I was going to tell you is. I met Joni Parthamer, who I think is your teaching partner, mm-hmm. um, during my first birthing class, which was 22 years ago. No way. Yeah. My my oldest <laughs> daughter's wow. going to turn 20 here pretty soon. So it was a little about 20 years ago. And and she blew my mind because I was, it was kind of pre-internet, sort of. I mean, it was like 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. It was like nobody could Google anything. And she said this in class. I'll never forget it. She goes, she goes, put your hand in this bag of ice. <laughs> like, like this uh-huh. is what, like, <laughs> this is what a contraction is going to be like. <laughs> and then really? she said something like, yeah, I was, she's like, this is the pain. And I was like, okay, that's not too bad. And then yeah. she goes, your wife's going to have hundreds of these. And I was like, I raised my hand. I said, did you say hundreds mm-hmm. <laughs> like of contractions? And I, because I really thought I was like, oh yeah, I've seen TV. They have this, this is like a, you know, half hour, like, like 10, 10, 10 minutes. contractions yeah, in 10 your contractions, bed. push, right. push, push, push. You're all set. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, oh. So, wow. Anyway, yeah. um, I have sure that we have crossed paths. I was in the very first um, bringing baby home training cohort. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, yeah. And I think I was in the second. There you go. Holy moly. I never taught it even once. I'm glad you're here, but I at least, (laughs) (laughs) but I at least know what it was when they first created it. So, I'm glad. Thank you for coming. How, right. how did you, um, okay, so I guess let's just sort of jump to the chase here. Sure. Um, mm. So for our listeners, we are speaking with Beth Goss. Today, we're going to be talking about 
the impact of babies on a relationship. What do we know? How can we support you? It's a complaint that we get a lot. I was just telling Beth, like, I feel like I have sort of this, like, maybe these taglines that I keep getting from my males and the taglines that I'm getting from my females. And it's kind of like the same complaints over and over. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I said, well, actually, Zach, you said we need to talk about relationships and babies and the impact and the whole thing. And I said, yeah, transition to parenthood is what I call it. Okay. Transition to parenthood. I said, we have to get Beth um, because Beth and I work together at the Gottman Institute. We all have worked at the Gottman Institute Mm -hmm. um, and you have been teaching this for years and years and years. I thought there is nobody better to do that. So we're going to pass it on over, but I do want to hear a little bit like Beth, what is your, when people say, what do you do? What's your jam? <laughs> what's your jam? Right. What do you do? Yeah, elevator speech. Yeah, what's your yeah. elevator pitch? Uh, but we also like the personal side of it, not just what you do to make money. Okay, so not just my resume. Not just your resume, because we're Excellent. human beings. I think the resume is usually the most boring thing about people. It is, right? 100%. You know? All right, I'll get that out of the way first. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so, uh, full-time, I'm over at North Seattle College, and I'm a parent education instructor. And so I work That's with- That's right near my office. Um, hmm Oh, yeah. well, cool. Yeah, we should yeah. go for a walk I'm, I'm sometime. With, <laughs> you can meditate side by uh, side. Now, there's, now the bridge is there. The bridge. Uh, <laughs> and that uh, that Frisbee golf course. Have you ever been there? I have not. That is bo- I know where it's it is. really fun. But, we should yeah. do that. Okay. Cool. Anyway. <laughs> well, yeah. When I'm not walking around campus, yeah. um, I'm in lab school. And we have them all over, uh, like on campus, but also um, in the community. And I work with the cooperative preschool program there. And so I do parent education with uh, parents kind of live on the ground as conflicts are happening in the sandbox. Um, And I'm a childbirth educator, which Joni and I used to teach in um, neighboring rooms Mm -hmm. way back then, Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, uh, more probably. Um, And then I'm also a certified gotten educator and training specialist with the Bring Baby Home program. And let's see about me. Wait, wait, wait. What's Uh, lab school? Yeah, good. Thank Ooh, you. Okay. I was wondering the same thing. Okay. Lab school is just, you know, when you take a take a class in college, um, sometimes there's a lab mm-hmm. involved. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. So this would be the lab portion of of the class for the parents. The parents are my um my students and the kids are the the classroom teachers' students. So it's basically it's preschool and the parents come with their kids. Once a week, mm-hmm. um, as the kids get older, they attend, you know, several times a week and the parents only come once and the parents are mm-hmm. learning how to be assistant teachers and work with other people's kids and their own kids. Oh, that's cool. Um, it is. It's a really cool program. Like they're literally yeah. training for jobs. They're not just training to like be like be their own parenting skill thing. Well, like, yes and no. Okay. Right. So. I think most of the folks in that program are not training to be um, like early childhood educators. We have a program for that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, It's really parents who are coming in and saying, I want support. (laughs) I I don't want to have to reinvent the wheel. And so I want, you know, other people around me who are going through the same thing. I want um, research backed information from a professional so that I can kind of go in the right direction and um, take all the things from my childhood that I liked and then add some new things that might work better. Holy moly. That's what happens in the lab school. So basically you know what you're talking about. (laughs) I'm trying, man. (laughs) Okay. I do want to, I, we're just, um, I, I want to jump off on that, but I also want to hear a couple tidbits of what you do. I have the question in my mind. I'm not going to hold it. Okay. Um, what do you do for fun? What's the passion? For fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've got lots of things going on. And I will say, Zach, my kids are older as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got a 27-year-old, soon to be 28, and a 24-year-old. And so, yeah, I all of a sudden I have some time again. Really, that gets filled in by work mostly. Mm -hmm. But um, for fun, I love to, um, like, be outside, kayak, hike, you know, that Pacific Northwest stuff Mm -hmm. that we do Mm -hmm. here. Um, but I also um, I like art. And so I currently my my jam is making stained glass windows. Oh, that, OK. That's I did so not cool. see that coming. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like to bring in a surprise. Yeah. That's awesome. OK. What is that? Wait, so wait, what does that mean? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Most interesting person in the I room. Mean, do you do, what, what, how, OK. How do you make a stained yeah. glass window? 
in, th- in like 30 words okay. or less. Right. I'm like, is this what the podcast is <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Um, it is we'll get the there. Pod- we'll get you, there. <laughs> you, and, and interestingly enough, I learned a lot about making stained glass from Lisa Tankersley, who is another um, childbirth educator and Gottman educator and training oh, specialist. Right. It's all like connected. Yeah. Um, like stained glass. Yeah. You, you <laughs> cut the glass, you make the pattern, you cut the glass, uh-huh. you um, grind the glass down and make it all even uh-huh. um and then i do the uh, the tiffany method so i take copper tape and surround all the pieces of glass with copper tape fit that in solder it together um and make a window hold on That's but so when do you cool. paint it do you paint it when it's in pieces or do you no, paint it after there's no there i don't paint it it's all different colors of glass. so yeah when you cut the glass you cut red glass you cut purple glass you cut blue glass. yeah i gotcha right and you cut it all to make the picture okay all right. I'm glad I asked that question. Okay. Yeah. Now, now let's talk about real stuff. <clears throat> the reason why we brought your big, big brain onto the podcast yes. um, is, okay. You were saying that you have these, first of all, I think this is genius because so many parents are sort of flying, you know, uh, what is the terminology? Like by off the seat of their pants by or whatever, the seat of their by pants. the seat of their pants. Thank you. Yeah. That's a quality. <laughs> that's a quality that my husband finds endearing. By the way, that I don't know my cool, cool, cool. You mix your metaphors. Yes, thank you. Um, do parents, if they are co-parenting, come together? Because I can already see how if one parent is showing up for the class and getting all this great education, and the other parent is at home and says, "Ah, I don't have time for it." Now all of a sudden there's like this imbalance, this hierarchy that's occurring where they're like, well, I was in class and I learned this from Beth and Beth said, this is how we should be doing it. And now you have an expert parent in the household and the whole hierarchy is thrown off. What the heck? Okay. You see, do you see that? Is it a requirement? Oh, totally. Totally. So it's not, if there are two parents in the household Mm -hmm. or more, um, it's not a requirement that everybody comes. So I, I, we need one adult to register with the college and be involved in that in like the education portion of it. But I encourage partners to, to join. And so sometimes that looks like Partners being the ones to come to class, you know, once a month or once every few months and be with their child in the classroom and sit in on um, the discussion. Because I also in with the youngers, the the infants and toddlers, I also do an in-class like facilitated parenting discussion Uh with a a small group of them. Um, And then once a month in the evening, I also do like a parent education class. And so that's the time that they can come without their kids. And I encourage them, if they're able to, Mm -hmm. you know, find a babysitter, um, come do parent ed, and then don't go right home. Yeah, Go out and chat and have a date. Exactly. Um, So back to the power dynamic. Yes, I I definitely see that Mm -hmm. because most couples aren't able to do that, which is reasonable. Um, And so you do, you wind up with one. And and I find regardless of the class, this is often how how parenting couples work, right? One is the one who's like Googling things Mm -hmm. and reading the books and asking all the questions. And the other one's like, just tell me what to do Mm. Um, or, and I'll do it or not do it. Right. So, but that does create an imbalance because then you've created this like expert in the house, quote unquote. And then the person who doesn't know what they're doing, Mm -hmm. which is not the dynamic that we're, we're looking for, Mm -hmm. which is why I encourage both of them to come. Mm -hmm. Um, But we have ways of like, talking to partners, right? Because some partners aren't interested, but some partners are. Um, yeah. And we, we talk, sometimes it works to just say, well, Beth said in class right, today, right. because what I do know <laughs> is that um, even though this is my job, if I, when my kids were younger, when I would come home and, and share some information with my husband yeah. about like, maybe we should try X or that he was not super receptive to that all of the time, right? It's, because yeah. I'm his partner and I'm telling him. Um, whereas if like a friend said they tried such and such, right. um, that might be more open, right? So like I'm not third person outside the relationship. Um, and that can work well mm-hmm. sometimes. Let's talk about that yeah. real, just real briefly because um, I when I talk to couples about contempt and I, I always describe contempt as I'm better than you. Right. So, and that can come from lots of places. It can come from the patriarchy and I'm a man. And so I've got all these privileges. And so I'm above you. 
um, it can come from, I make more money than you. It can come from, I have a better family than you, but then, yeah. then, then she gets pregnant and she gets all these resources and all this information and all of this like support. And all of a sudden I'm better than you. Cause I'm the mom, I'm the most educated in this setting. Like, how do you, I don't know, how do you protect them from that? Because we definitely yeah. want them to have information and we definitely want them to have support, but not in a way that you can sort of wield it like a club or wield it mm -hmm. like power. Like how do you? Right. <laughs> so yes, often the way that question comes to me in class is kind of later in the year, I talk about like the mental load of parenting. I have a variety of topics mm -hmm. that we go over. Right. And so inevitably there's often a mom, although not always, who will say like, I have to do everything. He doesn't even know like when the kid needs a doctor appointment or where the doctor is mm -hmm. or how to pack the diaper bag. Or how or to swaddle. So that, yeah. Or, you know, right. So that like, that was opens mine. up the conversation. <laughs> that, right? that was what right. I was bad at. <laughs> no, it's like it's this. Okay. Like, okay. Not everybody, okay. not every baby likes to be swaddled. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the, the conversation will kind of come up organically like that. And then that gives me an opportunity to talk about the power dynamic. And so um, women, and I'm making a generalization there, but if, for the parent who is home with the, with the baby most of the time, they're, they're home with the baby most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. So they have all of this time to make mistakes mm -hmm. and nobody's watching. Mm -hmm. And they learn all the stuff that doesn't work. And then they finally learn some of the stuff that does work. And then they're like, that's how you do it. That's how this kid goes to bed. This is what you do when they're upset. Oh, and so it takes all these mistakes to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Right. Then you have the other parent who doesn't spend that amount of time with the child, but they're home. They see them maybe in the evenings when people are not at their best mm -hmm. or, you know, everyone's kind of had it with the day. Um, and then they've got the baby and the baby starts crying. And then, the mom potentially says something like, oh, no, do this or oh, 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 watch the baby's head, which then makes the partner feel incompetent. And nobody likes to feel incompetent. Yes. So then the natural response is, well, I think she wants you. Mm -hmm. And so it's this pattern that happens. So what I encourage stay at home parents to do or like the, the primary parent, mm -hmm. I call it the parent who's spending more time with the baby um, is take some time to do your own thing, which is good for your mental health mm -hmm. anyway. And I, I encourage them, and this is pre-COVID, of course, right? <laughs> um, and we're kind of coming back into it, but like sign up for a class, do something where every Tuesday evening, I can't be home, like when you're ready to do that, mm -hmm. because that gives you some time away and it gives your partner this opportunity to spend some real time mm -hmm. with the baby, mm -hmm. with the kids and make mistakes while nobody's watching because mm -hmm. you got to do oh. that. And, and then figure out what works for them yeah. and what works for you doesn't necessarily work for them. And how awesome is it when your partner says, I figured out that if I bounce the baby this way on my chest, mm -hmm. she falls asleep mm -hmm. and you know, you never even thought about that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, yeah, I work a lot around that power dynamic yeah. and how there isn't one parent in charge. And, it, and also it's not that. One, one parent's in charge and the other one's helping, right? Mm -hmm. Or can you watch the baby while I go get my hair cut? Mm. That's, yeah, that's not, the baby. not what we're looking babysit. for. Exactly. Can you babysit You're both our child? Parents. Right. Mm -hmm. You're not a babysitter, you're a parent. Mm -hmm. And I also tell them nobody's born knowing how to take care of a baby. Mm -hmm. There's nothing special about me having a uterus that meant that when I had a baby, I knew what to do with mm -hmm. them. Um, so nobody knows what to do. And you're learning together. And some of us have more time to practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Um, as you're talking, I'm thinking about even um, as kids get older and there is the now we have teenagers and it's like, well, <sighs> you know, like mom just has a special connection with the kids and she knows how to talk to them. And so if there's ever an issue, it, it gets triangulated through mom or through dad or whatever yes. it might be. But I really like how you're talking about like, spend some time, have your own relationship, have those awkward conversations with the teenagers. Exactly. You know, don't just have all the information flow through one parent because they got it figured out because, you know, they might have it figured out, but you also have the capacity to figure it out. I do find that you do need parents, primary parents to step away to allow that relationship yes. to develop. Right. Like um, go slow to go fast. 
Oh, I like that. This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everybody loves turkey and stuffing, but guess what? My husband's going to be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming have blessed you with the ultimate Thanksgiving dinner topic. Why not tell your in-laws about the new cutting-edge ball trimmer and gift yourself or the man in your life the ultimate men's hygiene bundle? Trim your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and use code MTR for free shipping and 20% off. I'm a huge fan of their bundle, but if you're not willing to go all the way, you can take a look at their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. It features a cutting edge ceramic blade that reduces grooming accidents. Phew! Thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It also gives you the ability to turn on 4,000 watt LED spotlight on and off so that you can see what you're doing. Plus, it's waterproof. Oh, love it. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code MTR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code MTR and be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all from Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. This episode of Marriage Therapy Radio is brought to you by Fabric. I had surgery this week. I don't know if we talked about that on the podcast, but when I was checking in, they said, do you have a living will or an estate plan? And I said, yep. And then I wondered about you. Do you have a living will or life insurance policy yet? If not, then check out Fabric. Fabric by Gerber Life was designed by parents for parents to help you get a high quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policy in less than 10 minutes. Fabric's new lower prices mean significant savings over other providers with great quality policies like million dollars in coverage for less than a dollar a day. Life insurance can have a bad rap for being complicated, but Fabric makes it easy to apply with its seamless digital experience. It's all online and on your time. And if you need extra support, Fabric's team of licensed insurance agents can help answer questions along the way. It takes less than 10 minutes to apply, see your quote, and then personalize your quote to fit your family's needs. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. Fabric has partnered with Gerber Life, trusted by millions of families like yours for over 50 years. I'm really glad to have life insurance. I think you should too. Protect your family today with Fabric by Gerber Life. Apply today in just 10 minutes at meetfabric.com slash MTR. That's meetfabric.com slash MTR. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash MTR. Policies are issued by Western Southern Life Assurance Company. Not available in certain states. Prices subject to underwriting and health questions. By the way, surgery went great. Still alive and kicking. Looking forward to seizing the rest of my days and hope you are too. I was thinking about another Another dynamic that I see, or I guess complaint, um, you just hit on one of the complaints that I hear quite often, which is, uh, you know, kind of a primary parent that has it all figured out and serves as like the expert parent Mm -hmm. and this power imbalance that occurs. The second one that I'm hearing a lot is I feel like I went from being number two to my partner to now I'm number four or I'm number five, right? Like... I am so far down on the list of being important to my partner that I'm just like this person that lives in this house. Like I am like, I'm a, I'm a fixture, just like a a chair in this house. You hear that as well? Oh yeah. I call it going from being soulmates to being roommates. Yeah. Cause that's really what it is, right? Like you get together and you are best friends and you love each other and you, have fun when you do things together and then you have a kid (laughs) and a lot of that goes out the window Mm. and it's more like, okay, um, you, you know, I'm going to, I'll feed the baby. You go get the ingredients for dinner or I'm going to go out to dog and you, you know, get, get the first laundry in. So like you become these roommates who are just, um, like getting the business of the family going and keeping it afloat. Mm -hmm. Right. And, that's not why you got together and decided to have a family. Mm -hmm. You're missing all the fun stuff, all Mm -hmm. the extra stuff. You're just doing the business piece. So that's why really investing in your relationship really early on Mm -hmm. is so important because if you can have that foundation, you know, we talk about the sound relationship house. If you can have the found the the sound foundation Mm -hmm. for your kids, then, um, 
you have that strong relationship together and you parent together and happy parents, happy kids, you know, kids can tell what's, what's going on. So it's something that you, you kind of need to always be working on Mm -hmm. just because you have a baby doesn't mean like, well, we figured out the relationship part. (laughs) Now we're going to figure out the parent part. It's like, no, now we have to figure out how to parent together. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it takes a lot of work and be in relationship together. Yeah. And be in a relationship together. Right. And still do and still do the things that we used to do yeah. when we're ready. I know so many couples who kind of complain about this type of thing. And then I ask them, well, when's the last time they went out to dinner? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they'll tell me and then I'll say, but was that without the baby? Right. Mm-hmm. Sure. And they'll inevitably say, well, no. I mean, he was in the car seat. Mm-hmm. That's great. It's great to get out. But it's so great to go on a date without your children, mm-hmm. even if. You talk about your kids the whole time. Mm. At least you're kind of sitting there and like remembering why you liked each other in the first place. Mm -hmm. Right. You need those little infusions to bring it back to the family to do the laundry and do all the mundane stuff. So I have this theory that I um, that I'm not going to reveal right now. But when Um, couples come into my office and they're about to have a baby and they're like, what are we supposed to do? And I go, there's three things. This is the three things that you ought to do. I think you just said number one. Number one is you have to protect the friendship. Like yeah. the friendship that you built before yeah. you were, we had children um, that was so right. easy to do, the date nights, all that stuff. You have to figure out how to um, maintain that, whether that's date night and going to, out without the baby or just finding things, finding ways to continue to remind one another, oh, we actually like each other. Like, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're tired and we're stressed and we love this new creature who wants all of our attention but we have to protect the friendship. So, so far I'm one for one. Um, What else are they, what what else, what are, what else are your couples supposed to do to sort of get ready or be ready to add a baby to their environment? Oh, you are, you're, you're comparing your list of three. Yeah. My theory in my head. I just want to see if you can, I want to see if you can get the other two. Okay. Let's see if we match. (laughs) Let's see if you're right. Yeah. Second thing. Right. (laughs) Um, Is managing conflict. Right. Because, all couples have conflicts. Like we all do that. The goal isn't to not have any, it's just how to manage mm-hmm. it. So spending some time figuring out, okay, when we inevitably run into areas of conflict problems that we can solve, how do we handle that? So like we both feel okay afterwards, mm-hmm. right? It's not that one person wins and one person loses. So it's getting those skills and getting the practice in how to navigate conflict as it comes up, because it's going to come up, a lot once that baby comes. Right. Um, and then I think the third thing is to keep talking about the future. Mm. So it's easy to get stuck, especially with a, a newborn in like, Oh my gosh, this is my life now. Mm-hmm. And I've lost my identity as a, a human, as a, as a, as a woman, as a man, like you, you just become like the people who serve this tiny little person. right? <laughs> and you, you go from, I was somebody's daughter to I'm somebody's mom, mm-hmm. which is like a mind blowing transition. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so you can get really wrapped up in that. And I think it's really important for couples to, once they get a the hang of that a little bit, start planning for the future. Sure. And thinking about what do we want our family to be like? Mm -hmm. Like what's important to us? What are, what are some things from your family or my family that we want to bring in? What are some new things that we want to do? Do we, you know, what kind of vacations do we want to take? If we, if we do that kind of thing, like what, how, how do we create like this, you know, family culture Mm -hmm. for our, our our kids so that when they grow up, they want those things Mm -hmm. for, for their own families. Those are my three, Zach. Yeah. What are your three? Well, uh, I think we're aligned on number three. Number three is what I, I usually tell couples. They have to remember that they're playing a long game. And mm-hmm. I think that's the exactly. same. You know, and that they, that parenting is, parenting is not a thing. Um, because parenting an infant, the job of parenting is keep that baby alive. Parenting right. a teenager you 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 don't have to worry about keeping the baby alive necessarily. Like you have to worry about something else like responsibility or don't, you know, make sure you know how to pump gas or whatever it is, but you're playing yeah, a long yeah. game, including really understanding this transition to adding a new piece of identity, this thing called, I am now a dad. I am now a mom. Like, yeah. so, um, 
so I think we're, we're spot on there, but I, do, but and number two, it's not, there's no, of course, there's no problem with managing conflict, but this is the other thing that I want you to talk about. Cause I always say mm-hmm. you have to appreciate that all of a sudden, all of the physiology has changed that oh, happens yes. around sex, but mostly it happens around sleep. And what do you do yes. with, so, uh, you know, Beth, my, my 20 year old did not sleep through the night for five years. Oh, I'm sorry. That's why Zach looks the way that he does. Now. <laughs> that's why I look, that's see these bags right here. That <laughs> yeah. is because they are five no, but, years sleep. But so nights. we, we actually had to go through a point where we were sleeping by week. So like uh-huh. Rebecca would sleep for a week and I would get up with her like three-year-old, four-year-old. And then, but there was only one zombie in the house, but okay. So forget the five year yep. part. How do you, how do you prepare, help train, set up couples to understand or people to understand that everything they learned about their body and their biorhythm and everything else is now going to be subject to a, an, an invasion that is not <laughs> going to obey the rules that they've already yeah. established. Yes. So I think the first thing is there's no way to explain that. <laughs> Great. <right? laughs> and <laughs> because, <laughs> because, thank you for listening to this episode well, of Marriage Therapy Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Let me elaborate. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's no way to prepare parents for parenthood, right? Like I've been a childbirth educator and a newborn care educator and a breastfeeding educator and a, and a bring baby home educator for many, many, many years. And inevitably what happens is I do all my teaching and then I see the folks later and they'll say something like, you really should have talked about X. Yeah. And in my brain, I'm like, well, you know, we kind of yeah. did. covered that. Um, dumb. <laughs> because you can only hear so much before you have kids. You you can't conceptualize it. You just can't. You have to live it. Mm-hmm. So so there's that. Right. Yeah. Um, but I do a lot of work with especially my infant and, and toddler families on sleep. In fact, I just wrapped up two weeks of discussions in my infant and toddler classes on sleep. Mm-hmm. And it's always mm-hmm. the first. Well, like a second topic I do after introductions. Um, for co-op preschool because it's such a big deal. Mm-hmm. One, you know, one thing I talk about with sleep for them is what do you want sleep to look like in your house? Because independent sleep is a really American value. Mm. And a lot of the world is not that a lot of the world doesn't have sleep issues <laughs> because okay. they're all in the same room mm. or are in the same bed. And there's, you know, safety issues and variations on how you can do that. But, um, I think we create some of the issues by wanting our kids to be so independent. That's a real American value that we have, which is fine, but it's, it's, it's not a a universally held value. Right. So because so many of us have that value, we're working on this project and the project is getting the child to be able to self soothe and sleep through the night by themselves. Right. Right. So, I let parents know you don't have to do that. (laughs) It's, it's whatever works for your family. Mm -hmm. So if everyone's getting really good sleep because you're all in the same room, there's nothing wrong with that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. If you Mm. really can't sleep, if your child's in the same room as you, then that's a problem. Mm. And, and you need to think about how to, you know, graduate towards having your child in, in another room. And so it's, it's, another instance of sitting down and talking with your partner about like, well, what are our values around mm. this? Yeah. What, what do we want? Mm. You know, um, if you don't care if the toddler's in bed with us and I don't care, well, let's just all sleep together. Mm. And then we could all sleep. Um, <laughs> my husband was, uh, he sent me a picture. We already have a giant bed, but in our bed, we have a seven year old most often, right? Like he ends mm-hmm. up in our bed at some point in the night. Yeah. We also have yep. my giant dog that I have shown you and we have yep. a new dog that's coming. So we now have five, five bodies lumps in the bed, but he sent me a picture of, uh, it's like a European style bed, which is low to the ground and it's like a double yep. king. And he said, so we long. should have started this way. And I couldn't agree more. I mean, we live as a family where we just all kind of sleep in the same room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Wow. And, and people are afraid, afraid to talk about yeah. it. Like they, they don't want to bring it up. They're going to be judged. And so I really like to get it out of the way. Right. Like it's whatever works, you know, I mean, you want the baby to be safe, mm-hmm. cer- sure. certainly. And we talk about what that looks like. But yeah, um, I think that's actually that's really helpful to hear about because one of our flaws, particularly early on, was that we 
we read some book and we decided that that was the way that we had to sleep train. And so we stuck to the book and the book didn't work for my kid. Um, Mm -hmm. And it turns out there were lots of books that didn't work for my kid, but um, (laughs) maybe it was the the parent, not the, yeah, maybe, but but, (laughs) but I think that, you know, for me, it comes down to this idea of protecting the fact that your body has to function. You have to, you have to eat and sleep and breathe and go to the bathroom and exercise because you can't just submit to the whim of the, the, you know, the, the baby or the book. Um, Mm -hmm. so I like this idea of like, maybe you got to sleuth it out a little bit and figure out kind of what works. I mean, I don't recommend universally that people take turns by week, but that was the thing that got us through (laughs) a particular kind of phase. Yeah. Yeah. Take all, take all the books with a grain of salt. You know, there's some I like and some I don't. And and most of it's parts that I like. Well, that's where contempt comes from too, is I read this book and this book is right. So I am right. You know, exactly. Exactly. Right. And I ask parents too, like moving from the sleep to just the physiology in general is when they're really having a rough time, of course, I'm asking them about sleep, but I'm also asking things like, are you, are you eating meals? Mm -hmm. Like, are you eating something beyond the crust of what your kid left for lunch? (laughs) Right. Like Mm -hmm. mom diet, are you making some, right. Are you making lunch for yourself? Mm -hmm. Are you, do you ever get out of the house by yourself? Like just really basic. Yeah body and brain need things. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to deal with that before you can deal with like the, the higher Maslow's hierarchy stuff. Right. So you got to like be okay before you can do the, the the pie in the sky. This is what I want my life Mm -hmm. to be, you know? So yeah. It is kind of weird how, you know, you spend your time trying to reach the top of the pyramid, right. Of Maslow's hierarchy. And when you have a baby, immediately you're like, oh, you crashed down, right. you <laughs> fell off the cliff, and now you're at the right. very bottom. And you're like, okay, today my only goal is to get water, stay warm, keep clothes on my body. Because like as a mom, you're constantly yep. like topless. Keep some clothes on my body, stay warm, put some food in me, and sleep. Like, but I'm just right back to yeah. the bottom barrel. Right. For, just for like, a while. For, for a little while. while. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're scaring everybody Because you're playing off. the long game. It gets better. It gets better. <laughs> yeah, you are playing the long game. And you're playing, I, I talk about that a lot too, Zach. Um, you're playing a long game with your kids in relationship, right? You, you're not yeah. working on building a relationship when they're a teenager. You're looking on building a relationship when they're a baby. Well, I'm still working on building a relationship when they're teenagers. <laughs> well, sure. Yes, you can. It's something you continue to yeah, do. Of it's not, it's I know never done. But I, yeah, I, I, I think that parents don't think about like emotional health yeah. of kids mm. and, and think about methods of parenting that, um, I don't know, encourage relationship and communication yeah. as opposed to this big power hierarchy. Right. So, but when yeah. it comes to bringing baby home, the, yes. the main thing I think you're saying is you kind of have to hold it with an open hand, not the baby. You don't hold the baby with an open hand, but you hold like sure. the whole transition with this sort of, understanding that we have to be willing to learn and grow and pivot and learn from each other and grow and pivot because the the unit really is going to survive the initial crisis. I think that's what you're saying. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I feel like we could just keep talking and talking and maybe we'll find time and we can have you come on and talk more. Um, Phase two or three. Yeah. No kidding. How to not fire my children. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. From- but for today, <laughs> Beth has to get back to work because she has nine jobs. And right now I just have two. <laughs> yeah. That's how I Thank you. Yeah. And where where can people find you if they're in the Pacific Northwest, if they're, you know, just like mm-hmm. curious about knowing more about you or your resources? Yeah. Where do we send them? Sure. It's BethGoss.com. B-E-T-H-G-O-S-S dot com. Yeah. I do parent coaching also. Let's throw another job. Do you do it virtual? Oh, what a resource. Mm. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys, you heard it. BethGoss.com. Thank you so much for joining us. You are so welcome. It's awesome. Laura, you got to say the thing. Oh, we got to land this plane. That's my tagline. (laughs) Sorry, that's what we say at the end. So anyway. (laughs) All right. Uh, Thank you, Beth. Thanks, Beth. Sure. Hey, thanks so much for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. I was so excited to have Beth Goss. Obviously, she is a very busy woman um, and deeply entrenched in the world of 
becoming new parents, bringing baby home, uh, being a parent educator, you couldn't find a more um, educated and kind and just like worldly woman. So please, if you're interested, check out Beth Goss. Beth, B-E-T-H, Goss is G-O-S-S dot com. She works virtually with parents um, to get you on your path, get you through that, you know, that moment in time. Thanks for all of your time and attention, making your relationship better today than it was yesterday. Yesterday.